will, let your Bibles, we're going to read um, two texts. Um, all throughout the season of Advent, um, we're going to read an Old Testament prophetic text, and we're going to read a New Te Testament text. And um, it will be really neat to see um, what was prophesied that the people, what were the people expecting in those Old Testament texts, in those prophecies, messianic prophecies, prophecies about who the Messiah was going to come and be and how he would come. Um, and then we'll see um, how God fulfilled that, how it was different from what the people expected or how it was the same um, as what the people expected. So today we're going to be reading from Isaiah chapter 9, just verses 6 and 7. Normally we read this on Christmas Eve, so I'm very excited to get to read this a little bit earlier this year. And then we're going to read um, from Luke chapter 1, verses 39 through 45. So you might want to get your finger ready in that spot so we can flip over. But first... From the prophet Isaiah, um, chapter 9, beginning with verse 6. Now, just a little bit of background um, in the political situation of Israel, of Jerusalem at that time. Um, there is an oppressor, um, the Assyrians are coming against the Israelites over and over again in battle. And so there's this tension going on in the midst of um, what's happening in the life of the Israelites um, the fear and the wonder about what God will do in the midst of a time where there is war and where um, there is expected um, to be even further oppression from the Assyrians, for God to give this word is a powerful piece. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor. Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. And then from Luke's Gospel, these words. At that time, Mary got ready and hurried to a town in the hill country of Judea, where she entered Zechariah's home and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby leapt in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. In a loud voice, she exclaimed, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the child you will bear. But why am I so favored that the mother of my Lord should come to me? As soon as the, as the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby in my womb leapt for joy. Blessed is she who has believed that what the Lord has said to her will be accomplished. Brothers and sisters, these are the words of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Holy, holy, holy are you, almighty God. And we come to you today reading these texts in Scripture, coming into this Advent season of expectation. Bless us, Lord. Fill us, Lord. Open our minds and our hearts to be stretched and grown, that we as your people may be more and more in your likeness. In Christ our Lord we pray. Amen. Do we have the video? <laughs> maybe, maybe not. Well, you know what? I didn't really like that video anyway. <laughs> it's okay. So, tis the season to be... Advent season. How many of you say 
after Thanksgiving, isn't it wonderful that we have an opportunity to enter into the Advent season? Or do you say, now it's Christmas time! How many of you started listening to Christmas music already? Before Thanksgiving even, I did. I love Christmas music. Um, you can't not sing about the coming of Jesus enough, I don't think. I love it. And um, so, yeah, I've been listening to, um, and I love that new um, Santa Claus one that all the guys sing when the kid, oh, never mind, that's another story for another day. How many of you really do think about this as the season of Advent, though? I think a lot of times we experience this season as a time to hurry, 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 hurry. Don't you think you already said worn out? Are you worn out already or you're getting ready to be? Uh, all of the above. Some of you are worn out already, recovering from Thanksgiving, or expecting to be worn out because there's so much to do. Decorating, buying, giving, sharing. Did I say baking yet? And cooking, and caroling, and et cetera, et cetera, dot, 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 dot. You've already, in your mind, many of you, made a mental list. Some of you have already begun Christmas shopping a long time ago. How many of you, do you ever buy gifts and stick them away? Throughout the year, I used to do that. I'm not very good at surprises, though. And so I would do that. I would buy presents and save them up. And then I would see the person and I would go, I'm so excited. I can't wait. I can't give you a present now. And then I'm going to go buy another present for Christmas, right? Um, so there's all of that busyness. And <laughs> that, that seems to be the noise in my head at Christmas time. And if you go to the malls and, or, or the shopping centers, there's this world of people everywhere. We were over by Target the other day. Or TJ, which one was it? TJ Maxx? Uh, Kohl's. That's the one. That's my final story. They're all right there together. Um, Kohl's parking. People were having to park all the way at the back of the parking lot already the day after Thanksgiving. Crazy, crazy. <laughs> go, 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 go. What if we really entered into the season of Advent? In the church, we celebrate the season of Christmas. It begins Christmas Eve. Up until then, we are to be in expectation. We're to be anticipating Christ's coming, not only as the baby years ago, but Christ coming again. So what if this year, instead of speeding up, we slow down and we ask God, show me, show me how you want me to live. What if we intentionally picked up our scripture. You know, a lot of times during um, the seasons in the church year, Lent is the one that comes to mind as a time of real spiritual holiness and penitence for us. But what if we allowed Advent in that season of preparation of really getting our hearts ready? What if we allowed Advent to really be the time of expectation, the time to settle down and prepare our hearts for Christ? I, I've probably told you this story and I think I preached a whole sermon on it, but I love going to the hospitals when we're having new babies in the church. And I don't ask usually to hold the new baby. I just kind of wait to be invited. But there's kind of the expectation if you visit a baby in the hospital. And so the first thing that I do, whether I'm going to get to hold the baby or not, when I go into the hospital room with babies is I wash my hands at the sink. And then I use the hand sanitizer. I might do that on the way into the hospital anyway. But I want to make sure parents can see me do that because I want them to know that I have a respect um, for keeping their baby healthy and germ-free. And so the first thing I do when I go into the new baby's room is wash the hands at the sink and then use the hand sanitizer. And then I sort of try not to go. <laughs> but that's what I'm doing in my heart. And you know what I did was I washed my hands because I want to get ready to hold the baby. Maybe that's what Advent ought to be for us. Maybe it ought to be a time where we know there's some things in our lives that need to be washed away. Uh, maybe there's things in our hearts that need to be cleansed in order for us to truly receive Christ. When I was a child, I had all kinds of expectations about this season. And even though I grew up in the church, in, in a liturgical church, some of you still tell me, I did not grow up in a church that was liturgical, so I didn't know what Advent was until I came to this church. How many of you fall into that category? Yeah, so Advent is new for a lot of people. A lot of people did not grow up with um, celebrating the church year and the seasons. So as a child, even though I grew up with that, guess what I was doing on my non-church time? 
Sears and Roebuck, and J.C. Penney catalogs. <laughs> About this thick at Christmas time when I was a kid, because you didn't have Walmart, Kmart, and every other part along the way. You had pretty much J.C. Penney's and Sears. And the toy section at Christmas time was like this thick. You think the Toys R Us circular is big? Man, you remember the J.C. Penney and Sears catalog toy section? And I would sit, you know, for hours. And, and just flip through because there were some things I knew that I was going to ask Santa for, but there were other things that I didn't know about until I saw it. And Amy said the same thing. She would circle it. I would just turn the page down because I wouldn't know what it was. But sometimes I had to circle it, you know, just to make sure Santa knew which one I was pointing to. Um, yeah, and so sometimes I didn't even know what I wanted for Christmas or what I was expecting until I started looking. Maybe we aren't looking, so we don't really know what to expect in this season. When we were children, I have just one sister, just the two of us. And when we were children, on Christmas morning, my sister would always push me down the stairs first. Always. It, she was afraid Santa Claus might still be there. And one time on Christmas Eve, Santa Claus was on my front yard before I fell asleep. And there were lights, and there was a lot of noise right outside my bedroom window. And I was so afraid that Santa Claus was going to find me awake. And then, when you're asleep, you don't really know how much time has passed. And Santa's got a lot of places to go, so you don't know if he came to your house yet or not. So there was this anxiety about going down the steps. And my sister would always push me down, because we had expectations that there were going to be surprises for us. But there was a little bit of fear that Santa might still be there. We were always told you shouldn't let Santa see you. You know, that's kind of a no-no. So there were these expectations, things that I looked for to expect, and things that I was sort of thrust into. There were expectations. Mary and Elizabeth talk about expectancy. They both find themselves in generally the same position at very dramatically different times in their lives. There's this wonderful relationship between Mary and Elizabeth, and I think it was so sweet of the Lord um, that they were cousins. We know that Mary and Elizabeth were cousins. We know that Mary was very young, probably about 13 or 14 years old. And we know that Elizabeth was probably at least my age, beyond childbearing years, and, and that she had longed for a child. And that in that society, you didn't just long for a child, but if you didn't have a child, it was shameful. And so Mary uh, finds herself in this completely unexpected situation because she anticipates to be married to Joseph, but then the angel of the Lord comes to her and tells her that she's going to give birth to the son of God. And, and Elizabeth becomes pregnant after not understanding and knowing that she could even become pregnant. Talk about expectations at Christmas. There's this wonderful familiarity between these two women such that I think when, um, if you go back and read the whole first chapter of Luke, it's a, it's a great read to go back and remind yourself of the whole story. Go back and read all of it, okay? Say, I will, Michelle. Okay, go back and read it all. Um, there's this wonderful relationship between these women. I think it's kind of like they're so familiar that she doesn't even have to knock at the door, Mary, when she gets to Elizabeth's house. She knows where the hidden key is under the mat or under the rock. And she just runs into the house. Elizabeth, I'm here. Now, Mary knows that Elizabeth is pregnant because the angel of the Lord told her. But Elizabeth does not know in her mind that Mary is pregnant. But John the Baptist, six months in the womb now, the scripture says it was in the sixth month. That's the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy. John the Baptist, six months in the womb, whose job it is all throughout his life to point the way to the Messiah, to, to get people to prepare for the Messiah. While he is still in his mother's womb, he recognizes the presence of the Christ. And Elizabeth, without even being told, knows that there's something amazing. Not only that Mary's pregnancy is amazing, but that the child that she will bear is amazing. So what difference does it make? What difference it makes is that Christmas, God 
at this time wants to change us. Just as God sent the prophecy, for unto us is born a Savior, and his name will be called what? What are his names? Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. I mean, think about all of those things. That's exactly what the people were looking for. Wonderful Counselor. How many of you have ever had a wonderful counselor? Somebody who gave you sound advice. Someone that you know was spot on in their understanding, especially spiritually. Wonderful counselor who will lead us and guide us. Mighty God, the one that they expected to be the strong, militant Lord that would come to save them from their troubles. Mighty God, everlasting Father, the one who would nurture them, who would love them, who would guide them, who would shape them as they grew. His spirit. Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. The word peace in the Hebrew language is shalom. How many of you ever go, oh, peace out, y'all? You ever do that? Wendy, you do that, don't you? I know you do. And then you go, fierce. Yeah, I know you do. Um, I, I do that. I'm still, maybe I'm a hippie. I, I wasn't even really in the hippie years, you know? I was a little kid during the hippie years, but I still think peace out is just a great way to say goodbye, don't you? And so, or peace be with you. We say that in the church a lot. That kind of peace is better than just peace out kind of peace. It's not just the kind of peace either that, um, I, I told my Sunday school class, and I think I tell you this every year when we were kids, my sister, and even into adulthood, my sister would always ask my dad, Dad, what do you want for Christmas? And my dad would say, peace on earth. And my sister would say, no, really, Dad, what do you want for Christmas? Like, that wasn't enough. Peace on earth is more than just laying down your arms or setting aside your battle. Peace on earth means complete wholeness, health, holiness, without want. That's the kind of peace that the Messiah is and will be. So how are you expectant in this season? Maybe you need to expect yourself that you're going to be busy, so make yourself slow down. We have ideas about what the celebrations will be, but make yourself slow down. Because if you just go right through the season, you're going to miss so many blessings. Because Christmas is not only a time of expectancy for us, but God, too, has expectations for the season in our lives. God wants Christmas to change you. Did you hear me? God wants Christmas to change you. God loves you so much that he sent his only son when death was your reward. He sent you Jesus so that you can have life instead. God wants Christmas to change you. So I'm going to invite you to do the, the same three things I invited the Bible study folks to do. First of all, I'm going to invite you to slow down in the season of Advent. And to spend time in prayer every day. Find some time for just you and God. Get that relationship right. Find time for that peace. Allow the Prince of Peace to enter into that time for you. And then second, I want you to start thinking about people that you've been praying for for a long time. You know those people in your life that you go, oh my gosh, I wish they knew you, Lord. And you try to tell them, but you try not to be too pushy. And I guess what? You're probably going to see them within the next month or so. Who are those people that you need to pray for? And, and the, the instruction in our Bible study says, pray to pray to be diligent in your prayers. Did you get that? Pray that you will be diligent in your prayers. Pray to pray to be diligent. So pray that God will help you pray in all words. For somebody else. That's the second thing. Spend time in prayer yourself. Spend time in prayer for someone else. And then third, do something about it. Do something about it. 
reach out and touch somebody. The video that, that we were going to see today, it was just quiet vignette of a woman who was working. It was December the 22nd, and it was the last day on her calendar. She exited out the days of December. It was the last day circled on her calendar, last day to sign up for the mission trip. And she lets it go by instead of doing something about what God has done and is doing. God expects Christmas to change you. Do you? Let us pray. Hallelujah, Lord. Come quickly, Lord Jesus. Come into our hearts. Come into our minds. Change us, Lord God. Renew us. Fit us, God. For the celebration of your name and your season in this world, in our church, in our homes, in our lives. Change us in this season, God. We praise you.